Welcome to this new interchange session. My name is Philippe Ozil. I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. And in today's session, I'm going to be covering how you can use Apex maps with strings and IDs. So this question was prompted by something I saw on the Salesforce Stack Exchange. This question was asked by Raj Ray, and he was wondering about the behavior of some sample code. So let's take a look at the problem. This is fairly easy to explain. On the first line here, we are creating an account ID. Then we're creating a map of strings. We're adding this particular ID we've declared to the list. Note that we're adding it as a string here and we're placing a value next to it. Now, finally, that's the uh, interesting part. When we try to get the value from the map using the ID version, well, we get a null. That's really scary, right? What's going on? So this is the whole question that Raj had before us. Now, some of you may have noticed already something that may be uh, incorrect or maybe a bit wrong. We're actually mixing the ID type with some strings. So is that the problem? What's going on? So yes, it turns out that this is indeed the problem. You should be using IDs all the way around. So the map should be holding IDs. All right, now let's try to see why this is acting weirdly. And let's take a look at how IDs and strings can be mixed together and how certain things don't work as expected. So we're going to start by taking a look at two strings, which are the exact same ID, but expressed in two different ways. There's first a 15 character ID and then the 18 character ID. Now you'll notice that the start of the string here is exactly the same thing. The second version has three capital A's at the end. And a reason why we have those two types of expressions of an ID is that Salesforce can run on multiple databases and multiple systems. Some of these systems treat IDs in a case sensitive manner and others are case insensitive. So in order to make sure that IDs are reliable, we have two ways to represent them. If they're represented as 15 characters, it means that the case is sensitive. And if we're using the 18 character version of the ID, then it means that the ID is case insensitive. Now, when we compare these different things, of course, these are not the same string. So if we do an, an equals on these two strings, we have different values, so they don't match. But what happens when we convert these same values into IDs? Well, it turns out that all of these strings and IDs will be equal. Whether they're using 15 or 18 character, they will all be equal. Now, why is it happening this way? That's because we've actually implemented the equals method for strings and for IDs with this particular constraint in mind, the fact that we have both a 15 or 18 variants of IDs. So based on that, why, what's going on? Why isn't the map working with a mix of string and IDs? Well, the answer is a bit more elaborate than that. The reason why uh, maps aren't behaving correctly when you're mixing those two types is the fact that it doesn't rely on the equals method. A map actually uses something called hash code to compare for equality and to search for a key when you're look, using a key. And this comes from the Java world. Uh, maps, or I should say hash maps in Java, use a hash code. And the hash code is something that is available on every object in the Java ecosystem, but also in the Apex ecosystem. Now, I did mention objects, and by objects, I mean the base type for any class in the language. And not just S objects, objects. So for instance, S objects are a particular type of objects, but if you look also at primitive types like string, IDs, booleans, all of these are actually um, dependent or derived from the base object class. Now the base object class has a few methods. It has the equals method, but it also has the hash code method. And this is the particularly what is of interest to us for maps. To figure out uh, a value from a map, we need to calculate the hash code of the key that was passed to us. And this is how the map works. So let's now take a look at how hash code works uh, in Apex. We start by creating a string, which is an ID. We also cast it to an ID value here. And we're going to use a cast to the object type to generate hash codes. And you can see here that we have two different values that are generated for hash codes in this particular examples. 
the reason why we have different values here is that we haven't overridden the hash code method just like we overrode the equals method. So in the end, our string and our ID have different hash codes and do not match. And when you're using uh, map.get, well, this is calculating the hash codes. So it will not find the key that you're trying to look for. And this is the explanation about why the original call that we saw at the beginning doesn't work. By doing the conversions between IDs and strings, we are losing the hash code value. So when we're using uh, ID value here, we have actually a different value than the string that was used to set up the key here. So these are two different hash codes that are being used, and this is why we get a null in the, in the, in the end. That's it, that's the explanation. Uh, this is fairly advanced, but uh, you can easily uh, bypass this limitation by go, uh, using consistent types, so either using IDs everywhere or using strings everywhere. That's it for this short interchange session. I hope that you liked it and I hope that you learned something today. If you know of any questions that we should be ask, answering in our sessions, feel free to submit them on this form here and we'll take a look and come back to you if we find it interesting. That's it for me. Uh, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and make sure also to subscribe to our channel. If you want to hit us up on the social media networks, here's the full list of the ways you can reach out to us. Let us know if you want anything. We're here to help. Bye everyone.